weeks ago, we set out on the 07 Silverado interior build. We've torn out the baked, broken up dash and lined every square inch of this interior in sound deadening material. But today is finally the day we get some sounds. So ladies and gentlemen, aloha and welcome back to Paradise, a place I call the Lone Star Hawaiian Garage. If you are new, I'm a crazy Hawaiian Texan that likes cars. This is my 2007 Silverado, bought it nearly a decade ago and love it so much that when we relocated here to North Texas, yes, we brought it with us. Over in this corner, which I call Paradise Cove, is my beloved Camaro ZL1. My absolute dream car picked it up in December. And last and absolutely least is the old Mercedes in the driveway. Also currently missing in the lineup is the 2020 Trail Boss because my wife is actually out at the zoo with the boys. I just finished up work for the day. So we're gonna get working on the OG. Yes, we are in fact finally gonna be unboxing some special parts that are gonna be going into the dash, on the floor, under the seat. Yes, this thing's going to bump today, hopefully today, by the end of the day. Well, you know it's springtime when you have bugs completely obliterated on the front end of your car. Now, speaking of the ZL1, we're having conversations right now with the company for a full exhaust system for that beast. Now, it's not what you guys think, so definitely stay tuned for future updates for this car. This thing's gonna be a nutcase, which will also be a good time to say if you have not subscribed yet to the channel, don't miss out on any future updates. Hit that notification bell. But today's focus is gonna be right in here. We have Dynamat here on the floor, the entire roof line done in Kilomat, and we're finally ready to start installing my brand new radio, stereo, wiring, subwoofer, all that fun stuff but we still got a ton of work to do here. And step number one of this tons of work is gonna be pulling off all four of these door panels. We are lining the inside of the doors with more Dynamat and we have four brand new kicker speakers going in the place of whatever the heck is behind those panels. So as I've kind of been saying recently, it is now time to shut up and work. This is getting a little out of hand, guys. I am really praying I remember where all of this stuff goes because the bed is full as well. But the rear and front panels are completely off now, so we are ready to start cleaning this up and laying some Dynamat. When it comes to the speakers that are in here currently, I remembered as I pulled this off, I actually replaced these front ones when I first bought the truck. Both front speakers were blown when I bought it, so I just went to Walmart and grabbed whatever was there and put these in there. So the front ones are aftermarket, the rears, our world-renowned, amazing stock Chevrolet speakers. And that, yes, that was a joke. So these are coming out. All right, so here's where I get into a slight panic mode because I ordered these so long ago, I can't remember exactly what I had to order to make this all work. So got everything from Crutchfield, and they were actually extremely helpful to make sure I got everything I needed. So we have a bunch of bags just full of wires and parts and screws and connections. So I think I'm gonna figure this out as I go. But the speakers that are going in are kicker speakers. These are 240 watts peaks, six and three quarters in size and they're four ohm speakers. And I'm not gonna pretend like I'm an audio guy because I'm not and I have no idea what I'm doing, but Chip Foose uses kicker speakers, so that's good, right? Maybe. Here's my amazing wiring job about 10 years ago. Oh yeah. Haven't come very far <laughs> since then. getting the wired in and we're pretty much ready for the speaker but we're gonna put the dynamat on first but happening simultaneously i did want to call out yes in fact the freedom 500 i'm a huge fan of this what cletus mcfarland has done i.e garrett is just astounding the freedom factory his channel everything he's doing and the fact that he has my childhood hero there travis pastrana is 
Batman right there. That's just <laughs> truly something else. We're getting our work done, but we are laughing our heads off and having a good time all simultaneously. Good morning, guys. It's a uh... Bright and early the next day. We got the very top portion of that door dynamited. I don't know if that's a word, but it will be eventually. All right, the worst part is complete. The Dynamat and Killmat are installed. I keep forgetting how painstakingly long this takes to do because of all the holes, the nooks and crannies of the workaround. And I took a different approach on the driver's side than I did the passenger side. The driver's side, I went ahead and laid a full sheet on and kind of cut out the holes where I needed to have, I guess it called access, where the passenger side is more or less a jigsaw puzzle. I don't know the right way to do it. I'm thinking that was a little bit easier, but regardless, we're on to getting these speakers in the driver's side. So we have our two kicker speakers, one going in the front, one going in the rear. And then finally, we're gonna get to our brand new Sony head unit. I'm so excited to finally be upgrading this thing. We are finally to that time where we're going back to the dash because what's going in that place is right over here. We have a Sony AVXV 7000, yes. <laughs> Once again, I'm not gonna pretend to be an audio guy because I am far from it. But for the research I did, this is exactly what I'm looking for. The touchscreen, it's supposed to be very responsive, has Apple CarPlay, but as well has a built-in amplifier, which we can power a subwoofer off of because we're gonna to try to keep this interior as simplistic as possible, but leveraging the luxury side of simplicity, and I'm just talking two hours later. So I'm slowly having to figure this out, but here is our new head unit. This is such a sweet looking unit, but uh, what I just remembered, and I knew this when I bought it, I actually have to draw out this back plastic piece here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that up. This shouldn't be too hard. This is just plastic, so wish me luck. All right, we got that back section drilled out, took the Dremel and softened up this edge a little bit just to prevent any cutting into any wires maybe down the line. And I also figured out how the heck I'm gonna mount the new radio unit up. So I got this separate kit from Crutchfield. This is a separate piece that's meant for GM dashes to mount an aftermarket radio in. And it comes with three pieces. We have these side pieces, the front piece, and then obviously the other side. How this mounts onto the faceplate, as you guys probably already know, is the side is going to bolt into the side of the new head unit. And then this faceplate here is gonna mount onto the dash. So that's gonna hold everything in place. 3.28 AM. We've unhooked and rehooked the airbag multiple times. I have two airbag sensors underneath the seats unhooked. Every single plug and switch is still open. What could go wrong? Nothing blew up yet, that's good news. On the back of this radio, like every other radio in the universe, there's an ACC line, which basically 
tells the radio the truck is on. I need to hook this into somewhere that has power with the ignition on. We're gonna call it a night and I have not had any luck at all trying to find this ACC input. So the last radio that was in here, they actually hooked it up to the climate control. So when you turn the ignition all the way on, it turned the radio on. But I want it with the ACC or the accessory ignition on like a normal radio would work. And there's not one fuse in this entire truck that has power when the accessory ignition is on. When you turn the ignition all the way on, there's a few that do power up. But with the accessory, there's, there's nothing. But again, the previous owner tapped into the climate control right here, pulling power when the ignition goes all the way on. That's gonna do it for now. I'm going to bed. See you bright and early again. Good morning, guys. I wanna take a quick moment and celebrate because it's obviously a brand new day and fresh eyes bring wonders. And I was able to research this little panel down here for different accessories. If you have an LTZ model, you'll have another plug here with a bunch of different accessories. Now, what I'm going to be doing is tapping into one of those locations under there that has 12 volt power with the accessory on. And when it's off, it cuts power. This is electrics. And yes, this is hooked to very delicate system. So if you overpower it, surge it, pop it, it's it's a tough, tough fix. User beware, but this is what I'm gonna do. I'm super stoked I found that. And ladies and gentlemen, we have power. Check that out. What I'm gonna do now actually is wire this up underneath the dash, and then we're gonna start putting that radio where it belongs. I haven't hooked up the sub yet. Oh my gosh, it's so clear. It's so clear. Can you hear this? If you guys are curious, that's non-copyright sounds. Great source for some music if you want to do YouTube videos. That's what I started with, don't do it anymore. So here we are, a complete mess in the truck. The absolute best news ever is that works. We're on accessory here. So I turned the ignition off, so off, perfect. And turn it on, yep, there it is. Heck yes, I'm so happy it actually works. That was a nightmare wiring that up. So let me get this all cleaned up and get this sub in there. All right guys, so surprise, here is our subwoofer. This is an under seat sub, kicker comp, it's a 10 inch sub. This should give me the base I am looking for. Again, I'm coming from stock speakers in a terrible Sony head unit that was built in the 90s. So the new head unit we do have has a built-in amplifier. So what you do is utilize the rear speakers outputs for a subwoofer. It does put out the amperage you need to power a sub. Supposedly, so we're gonna find out right now. Hey bud, you wanna hear the truck go boom, boom, boom? Hear the truck go boom. And again, disclaimer, not an audio guy. No idea what I'm doing here, I'm just going for it. but I have some OxyClean total interior and I have some old tough stuff that I forgot I had and a tire brush.
All right, so let's plug that in, change to Apple CarPlay. Okay. <laughs> this is amazing. It's so clear. That is outrageous. The Dynamat, the speakers, the amplifier, the sub. And why did you shut off on me? Guys, welcome back to nearly a week later. As I was testing it this week, I started to notice that the radio actually started cutting out, meaning shutting off and restarting. I couldn't figure it out. And I figured out it was actually providing so much power to the sub and speakers that I was like short circuiting itself. I'm not sure of the actual technical term. So I actually ran an amplifier wire direct to the battery across through the firewall, grounded as well. So we have full power. And I didn't even realize how much potential it actually had to power the subwoofer by not going, call it full power. So the radio is back out. We now have full power at the subwoofer. We have our amplifier wiring kit, which is now run through the firewall and to the back of the radio here. We have our new ground. So basically this is serving now as an amplifier as it should have been. Jeez, it almost stepped on you, dude. You gotta be careful. Yes, you. And why do you have scissors? Where'd you get these? So the truck is currently on a trickle charger because I've been playing with it all week. I've run the lead to the battery. It does run across this stock location. I spent some time trying to run that wire exactly where the stock wires are. It goes through the firewall, up under the dash, and then it comes back out through where the radio is, and it's now hooked to the back. So this is now done. We just gotta get the radio back in and close this thing out. All right, guys, I finished up work for the day and I'm about to launch this video for you, but I just realized I didn't even walk through this new Sony unit I installed at all, like capabilities, how I like it. So I've been playing with this for nearly a week now, and I want to show you guys some of the great things about it. And also the only one bad thing I've found so far, and this is the, we're going to start with the bad. So we got the AC on or accessories on. We're still waiting. We're still waiting. There you go. So about three to four seconds it takes from receiving power to actually turning on. But as soon as it turns on, this is by far the best aftermarket unit I have ever used. The responsiveness of it, how quick it is, the touch, the interface, it just works so incredibly well. So from tuner, this is surprisingly quick and it's not pressure touch sensitive i'm not sure the actual term for it but it actually senses your finger and even those lightest of touches works and i do love the analog buttons down here the actual physical buttons you can feel when you click it but the touch screen is wonderful so i plug my phone in there and my absolute favorite part of this is right there apple carplay so this is apple carplay and android workable and it it does everything. The exact same format I would see in my new ZL1, I am seeing right here. And then the functionalities, it's just as quick, just as easy to use. I can get home, have all my applications here. I got Waze, I have Maps, I have everything on here through Apple CarPlay. So this is by far the best aftermarket unit I've ever used. But again, look how quick it is. It's so simple and straightforward. And paired up with all the sounds we have in here, Oh my goodness, this sounds so incredibly clear. It doesn't boom and bump like dual 12 inch subwoofer bass, but it has exactly the amount of volume I wanted. I enjoy the exhaust noise on all these vehicles. So the amount of time I actually listen to music is pretty minimal, but when I do, I want a clear, concise audio, but also have a good amount of decent bass, which I'm getting out of this one 10 inch. But these four kicker speakers with the built-in amplifier that this comes with, is tremendous. So I highly recommend this Sony unit. And one last time, this is the Sony XAV AX7000. 100 watt by four speakers, high output, built in amplifier. If you want additional bass, you can obviously always put an amplifier back here and wire it into the battery to get more bass out of your sub. But that might be a day down the road or a day will never happen. So that's my intermission, right back to where we were. But as always, I hope you enjoyed this one, guys. If you did, be sure to smash that like button below. It helps the channel out tremendously. If you haven't joined the Lone Star Hawaiian family just yet, scroll down, hit the subscribe button below. If I've earned your subscription and join the fun on the build is here. There's more coming with the Trail Boss this year. There's a lot more coming with the ZL1 very soon. 
So if you guys are excited for that, definitely stay tuned. But thank you again so much for all the support. We'll see you guys in a few days for our next video. Until then, y'all take care and aloha. Last time, guys. Things about to change this evolution. Voices shake the ground, you feel it move.